understanding among you. Let him show by good conduct that his words are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exists, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. I, I, want, to, I want to share with you this morning uh, at real wisdom, amen, at real wisdom. You know, I, 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 I see these handles uh, that some folk use, their Twitter handles and so forth. And uh, sometimes uh, there's more than one person with the same name. Sometimes it's because uh, some folk impersonate other folk. And, uh, and so an individual would uh, use as their handle at real this or that, you know. And uh, the, the purpose or the thinking behind it, I suppose, is that they are interested in uh, trying to make clear uh, that they are the real one. Uh, no fraud, no imitation, mm -hmm. no copycat, no look-alike. Uh, but they are the real individual, the real person. Uh, and, 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 and it's in today's text that James seek to identify the real wisdom. Uh, he says that there is a false wisdom and then there is a real wisdom. And so Brother Moore, he really turns our attention to make a distinction between the two. Last week out of chapter 2, he dealt with us in a similar fashion in relationship to faith. You recall he uh, made an effort to distinguish uh, between living faith and dead faith. Amen. Yes. And so this week he wants to continue in that vein, but he instead turns our mind to theme and thought of wisdom. As you look at, uh, as you look at James, and you'll notice here that we're picking up at verse 13. We didn't want to be redundant uh, in this fashion because we referred to some of what he talks about in the first 12 verses. Uh, when we talked about uh, uh, the a tale of two perspectives earlier on, if you recall, and in that message, as we dealt with that, we dealt with some of what he shares in verses one through twelve in regards to not giving, being a respecter of a person. 
And we talked about being rich, being poor, and how God deals with us from both perspectives and so forth. And in that, we reached into chapter 3, and we dealt with some of what he speaks of there. Um, as, and and we, we also dealt with uh, this idea of the tongue as we dealt with uh, being uh, slow to speak and swift to hear. So, and so we moved past that to verse 13. We see that here, as God is dealing with the people of God, as they're going through their trials and their tribulations and circumstances, you see here, as you paint the picture of how it is that we deal with trying times, uh, that it has a lot to do with us. Um, you know, we, we would suspect that God would tell us, you know, about other folk and how it is that we can handle them, you know, Brother Darnell, and uh, what shortcuts we can take to get around them, you know. Um, and he would give us some, uh, some kind of analogy, you know, to teach us how we, you know, up over this hill. But he's been talking to us about us how to handle and conduct ourselves and how to relate to God in the midst of our tough times. That if we're going to deal with tough times, that we've got to have a living, genuine faith in our life. And that we've got to have real wisdom in our life. And so today, he takes and turns our attention and he, he, he deciphers and delineates between wisdom that relies on God versus wisdom that is rooted in self-reliance. We can depend on ourselves, our talents, our gifts, our knowledge, where we went to school, what community we grew up in, all of that, who we know, who we rub shoulders with, and all of that. What places we've been and who we've been there with, you know, where we eat and dine. And we can, we can get into ourselves to such an extent that we forget all about God and what he's doing. Yes. And so he makes a distinction between wisdom that relies on him versus wisdom that comes uh, from our own self. And so, and so he talks to us today. And as he talks to us about this idea of real wisdom, he asks us this question in verse 13. He says, who is wise and understanding among you? And that all sounds familiar to us because it's, it's similar to the conversation he just had in, in chapter 2 when he talked about, you know, you say you got faith. Uh, you tell me about your faith and I'll let you see my faith demonstrated right before your very eye. Just watch me. Look and learn. You'll see uh, my faith acted out on the pages. And, and so he asks this question uh, in this fashion. He says, who is, who is wise and understanding uh, among you? If you would purport to be wise individual, these are the words that he would share with you and I. Let him show by good conduct that his uh, works are done in the meekness of wisdom. And right here off the top, he immediately lets us know that there is more than one option uh, that we have for wisdom in our lives. There, there is more than, than, than just, just one choice on, on the page. There's an A and, and a B. 
And then there are perhaps some sub points underneath each one of those. And he says that real wisdom is a wisdom that is demonstrated and it is practiced and acted out on the pages of life. He says, real wisdom is not concealed, it is not hidden, it, it is not wrapped up on the inside of us. And, and we with piety and with chest pro, just protruding out, you know, just sitting there feeling like, you know, we are wise individuals. No, he says, real wisdom is not in, inside of us puffed up, but real wisdom is displayed on the outside. When folk look at us and see the choices that we make, the directions that we take, they know that we are a wise individual. He says real wisdom is demonstrated. He says, I, I want you, if you are a man or a woman of wisdom, I, I want you to demonstrate that. Let him show by good conduct. Let, let somebody in our neighborhood, on our jobs. Let somebody in our family, around our inner circle, somebody, our, our friends, our homeboys, uh, let somebody uh, be able to see uh, through our conduct that we are in fact wise. That song that had been shared down through the years, let the works that I've done speak for me. And so, whether it be faith or wisdom, Paul is pressing on us. He, he's pushing us to a place where we are demonstrating personally what, is, what it is that we say that we believe in with it. And, and I want you to catch that. Those of you who've been in on Wednesday nights, you see this parallel, don't you? First John, we're going through on Wednesday night. You see this parallel. Both of them are pressing hard on us. Uh, asking us that we would that we would show outwardly, that we would demonstrate. It says you demonstrate by good conduct, you demonstrate uh, by, by a wisdom that is clothed in meekness. You see, the wisdom that is real, the wisdom that uh, is genuine, is a wisdom that is mild and gentle. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 it does not have to put itself up on a mantle. It does not have to uh, push itself up on a stage or a mountaintop in order for it to be wisdom. It's wisdom all by itself. And in its own sense of meekness and gentleness, in, in its own mild way, it, it exudes and it exalts itself just from being gentle. A lot of times, you know, we feel like that we've got to be the loudest individual in the room in order to be heard. But sometimes you can be heard best through uh, that still small voice as God did when folk were looking for him in the thunder and the lightning, when they were looking for him in the earthquake and the rattling of things. Uh, and, and here he would show up with a still, small voice. Uh, and God says we can learn something about wisdom from that, and that, that wisdom does not need to, to puff itself up, nor to exalt itself, but just in meekness, uh, wisdom just sort of exudes. Let's demonstrate real wisdom in our life. And so he, 
he, he pushes us and he promotes real wisdom in our lives. And then he goes on in verse 14 and he shares with us this. He says, I, I'm going to share with you two parallels. He said, I'm going to share with you earthly wisdom and then I'm going to share with you real wisdom, which in effect is godly wisdom. And he shares first with us this idea of earthly wisdom. Time will not permit to be exhaustive in this vein, but let me just simply point out and highlight what he's trying to get across to you and to me. He says, but if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your heart, do not boast and lie against the truth. He says, that if your wisdom is full of pride, he says, if your, your wisdom is somehow or another self-seeking in your heart, if your wisdom uh, is somehow or another trying to boast itself or to push you higher then somehow or another, my brothers and sisters, he says that that kind of a wisdom is, is not the wisdom that, that God is trying to instill in your life and in my life. He says, in fact, this wisdom that is self-seeking and self-serving is is wisdom that does not uh, descend from above, but is earthly in nature. And, and look at how he describes this kind of wisdom. He says, it's earthly. He says, it's central. In, in other words, that word suke, which means the soul, which, which deals with our, with our inner being. He says that, that it comes from inside the soul of man, man's own essence, his centralness. And, and then he adds, he adds this, he says, in fact, and this would seem a little harsh, he says it's demonic. He says that kind of wisdom that, that, that is seeking its own is, is in fact, Demonic. I had to say I was there, B, as I looked and I rolled over this message in my mind all week long. I, I, I had to I had to look at that and, and I had I, I had to say, ooh. I mean he typed but he right. <laughs> 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 <sighs> First Corinthians chapter 1, <coughs> verse 17. Listen, he says, For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. L listen, he says, not with wisdom of words, he says, but the gospel. And and, and with so many things that are calling for our attention, calling for us to stand up for, and there are a lot of things that we all stand up for, we all lend our voices to. But my brothers and sisters, as we lend our voices to these various efforts and activism and so forth, we all never allow the voices to cry louder than the gospel. I look, I look at uh, what the devil is doing in trying to divide the church of the living God. Yes. But God called us to share Jesus Christ. Yes. And I come yes. to tell you that I still believe that the real wisdom that God exudes and exalts us is able to handle the ills of our day. If you got an evil yes, officer who's wearing a uniform and under the color of authority is abusing their power, I still believe that God is able to impact and make a difference in the life of that individual. And he can convert. I mean, we do preach that the gospel can save a murderer. We do preach that the gospel can save 
a, a convict. We yeah. do preach uh, that God can turn around a thief. We do yeah. preach that. You know? yeah. Yeah. And if God can convert uh, a, a thief, if God can convert somebody on death row, then certainly God can convert somebody whose skin is different than yours or mine. Yes. God don't just say black folk. <laughs> Can I get an amen right about that? But we have made it as if we have separate gospels, one for white folk and another gospel for black folk and other minorities. My brothers and sisters, there ain't but one gospel. We spend a lot of energy and time getting mad at one another with what's going on today. Yes. And, and it's only a trick of the devil. And that's why it's not as harsh as we think it is when he says that this stuff is demonic. Yes. It's demonic. Uh, yes, the only one who gets pleasure out of division in the body of Christ is Satan himself. Yes. When we when we divide ourselves, we can no longer stand uh, hand in hand with the book in our hands uh, and declare that Jesus Christ is able to make a way out of no way. That Jesus Christ can convict and convert. Uh, yes. yes, only Satan. Yes. Because we cannot declare in our churches, in our community, in our hood. Yes. yes, that Jesus Christ is all of that and a bag of chips. And then on Monday through Friday, we tearing down everybody who is a core individual, who is a child of God, because their skin color is different. Those same individuals will come to your church and my church, and they'll find themselves confused. How is it that God is preaching love and we're shouting all over the pews uh, on Sunday morning, but we're hateful on Monday through Friday? Somewhere or another, there's some confusion in this gospel. And we know uh, that the gospel is not the grounds for the confusion. It's this self-wisdom that we have where we think we know better than God, we know more than God, and we put our cause above God's cause. God can straighten out an evil heart. Yes. I don't care. I don't care what they look like, what color their skin is. I don't care what uniform they may be wearing. God can deal with an evil heart. Yes. yes. And God can protect his children from the misdeeds of a hateful folk. Yes. I'm a witness. Yes. Yes. There have been plenty of folk didn't like you. But they paid you. Yes. There have been plenty of folk didn't want you to succeed, yeah. but you did anyway. Yes. That's right. Right. Plenty of folk Ooh, Lord, yes. didn't want you to have the car you're driving, but you're still driving. Yes. There have been plenty of folk, uh, yes, yes uh, didn't want you to have your right mind, but you're still walking around yes. in your right mind. There's not plenty of folk uh, didn't want you to have the place you're staying in, but you, there you are with a roof over your head. There have been plenty of folk who tried to take you along the way, but here you are, you're still standing. Uh, can I get a witness up in here? God can keep you. God can save you. God can save you. We, 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 and, and, and they, suggesting for one minute that there's not a place for us to stand up and to speak up. Right. I'm not suggesting that. Right. But my brothers and sisters, we don't know 
do it. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I seen too many folk who started out with nothing uh, and God raised them up to have something. Uh, I seen too many folk. Nobody in their family graduated from college and now they're an attorney. Uh, I see too many folk uh, who have raised up uh, and climbed up even when folk were hating on them. Yes. God can do it. Yes. No matter who is against you. And we need to we need to get what our poor parents had. You know, folk don't, don't go to church as much as they used to. Back when 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 our ancestors and our forefathers went to church. Yeah. But I want you to tell you something about our forefathers. Uh, yes, who, who made their way down. Sometimes they had to walk uh, down a dusty road uh, to get to church. Uh, but they got to church. Uh, yes, uh, and they made it when folk were trying uh, to hate on them. Yes. That's right. That's right. We had black Wall Street all over the country with no welfare, no Section 8, uh, no food. Yes, uh, to take your mind. 
without it following you there. My brothers and sisters, i got to leave you with this. Thank he you. says, Thank here you. is the harvest yes, Lord of real wisdom. Here, here's what you get from real wisdom. Here's the harvest. When, whenever, you, whenever you till the ground, turn the soil, whenever you plant seeds, it, the whole purpose of it is that you will ultimately be able to have a harvest, that you'll be able to have fruits and vegetables, that you'll be able to lace your plate with something uh, that is delicious to eat. Yes. And, and so he says there is a harvest that is coming uh, for those who would not seek earthly wisdom, but those who would seek real wisdom, godly wisdom, that is a payday someday. Yes. <sighs> so here's where, here's where real wisdom comes from. Verse 17, but the wisdom that is from above. Yes. It's first pure. Yes. Then peaceable. Yes. Gentle. Willing to yield, yes. full of mercy and good fruits, yes. without partiality and without hypocrisy. All right. Real wisdom comes from above. It does not originate out of me, no matter how smart I think I am. No matter how well I feel like I've been in school and what school I graduated, it does not come from me. Right. That's why earlier in chapter 1 of James, verse 5, he said this, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Yes. God gives wisdom. And if we want genuine wisdom, then we must align ourselves with God. God will provide it for us. Yes. 1 Corinthians 1 and 5. That you were enriched in everything by Him in all utterance and all knowledge. My brothers and sisters, God can give us wisdom. And wisdom is simply this. Wisdom is more than just knowledge. Knowledge is having a, a lot of book learning, uh, but, but you may not uh, know what to do with all of that book learning. Wisdom takes knowledge uh, and, and it breaks it down uh, and you are able to decipher and discern uh, what to do in any given, any given situation uh, with the knowledge that you have accumulated. Yes, uh, you may know how to drive a car very well, uh, yes, uh, but in a pinch, uh, yes, when you are about to have an accident, uh, when a car is headed straight for you, uh, yes, uh, it's not knowledge of how to drive a car, but it's wisdom uh, of whether or not you ought to hit the brakes or hit the gas. Uh, it's wisdom uh, of knowing whether you ought to turn the wheel right or if you ought to turn the wheel left. Uh, it's wisdom uh, that will help get you out of a jam. Yes. Real wisdom produces pure. And that word pure. Uh, hagias. Same word that we get our word holiness. Right. Real wisdom produces holiness inside of us. Real wisdom produces peace inside of us. If the wisdom that we have is making us more anxious, if the, if the wisdom that we have uh, makes us mad, if the wisdom that we have uh, ticked us off, uh, then that's not the wisdom that God is talking about. Uh, the wisdom that God has uh, will produce peace in our life. Not only does it produce peace in our lives, uh, but it allows us to, to, to exude peace uh, and become peacemakers. 
make, it'll make us gentle. Yes. Make us easy. Yeah. Uh, to be entreated or greeted or easy for individuals to approach us. Yes, uh, it, it, it bears the fruit of mercy. Yes. Practical help. Yes, not philosophical. I mean, you got this earthly wisdom and, and it's very heady and high minded. Uh, yes, uh, it sounds good, but you can't do nothing with it. Mm -hmm. that, that, there's a tree in the backyard. It's, it's an avocado tree by name, but what it produces is anything but. I mean, it looks like an avocado. Yes, it's shaped like an avocado. But when you cut it open, you can't eat it. It don't taste right. It don't look right. It, the texture is just not right. Only thing that it's good for is providing some shade in the sun. Yes. My brothers and sisters, we do not plant fruit trees just for the shade. We plant fruit trees because it promises us that it will give us something to eat. Right. Yes. God says that the wisdom that comes from God will give us good fruit. There's a harvest that is coming. I got to sit down now. But there is a harvest that is coming. From the wisdom of God, in the presence of God, God can give you peace in these trying times. Yes. If he did it for the church in the early days, God can do it for you and for me. God can give us peace of mind. God can allow us uh, to fulfill our dreams. God can allow us to go where he has charted and promised for us to go. God can do it in our lives. Uh, but we've got to hold on to God's unchanging hand. We've got to ask him for the wisdom. Uh, we've got to ask him for the blessings. We've got to ask him for the fruit in our lives. Uh, and he can make the difference. Yes. And so we say that. Real wisdom. Mm -hmm. Speak to me. Yes, Lord. Yes. I mean, if you're on Twitter, you, you just say, at real wisdom, hold me up. Yes. At real wisdom, give me peace of mind and contentment. At real wisdom, help me to deal with this cantankerous folk on my job. At real wisdom, I tell you, he'll do it for you. Yes. He'll walk right by your side in the midst of whatever it is you're going through. And he'll make the difference. That's the reason why he pauses here to talk about the distinction between false wisdom and, and real wisdom in the midst of a people who are dispersed and, and, and displaced from their homeland. That's a reason. Because if we're going through something in our lives, but we're, we're following after the wrong crowd trying to get results, uh, we're going to be frustrated on Monday yes. just like we was on Saturday. Uh, yes. if, if we're going through something, uh, yes, in our lives, uh, and, and we're not looking at the right place or the right resources, uh, yes, we'll never get the comfort that we're looking for. We'll never get the direction uh, that we're looking for. We'll never get the guidance that we're looking for. You've got to look in the right place. There's a game we used to play when we were kids growing up. We'd hide something. And after we'd hide it, we'd have other folk go look for it. Well, yeah. And we would give them clues. Yes. You cold now. Yes. Oh, you're getting warmer. Mm -hmm. And when they were right on top of it, we'd say, you're red hot. Uh -huh. That's right. And they move away, you're getting cold. My brothers and sisters, uh, when you get in the direction of where Jesus is, you're red hot, you're burning up. You're, when you get to the wisdom that God offers, uh, yes, you're on top of it. Uh, yes, uh, just reach down, it's in front of you. Uh, my brothers and sisters, hold on to God's unchanging hand. Yes, yes. He'll see you through. Yes. When everybody else around you is losing. 
losing their mind, you're still walking around singing this joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. And you'll go on and you'll sing verse 2, this peace that I have. And then after you get done with that, you'll go on to verse 3 and you'll say this love. Yes, I know there's some folk who hate me. I know there's some folk who want to see me fail, but this love that I had, the world didn't give it to me. And so I can keep on loving folk. I can keep on with a smile on my face. I can keep on with joy in my heart because those folk didn't give it to me and those folk can't take it away from me. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. 